Well, you guys got another video. Should you debloat Windows 11? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, there is tons of debloat scripts out there on the internet. There's also applications and all sorts of stuff that you can use. So we're going to go through and I'll answer some of your questions that you've been asking in the comments and also in emails and things like that. So first off, should you debloat Windows 11? Rather than say yes or no, let me tell you what it can do and what it can't do. So the benefits of debloating your system, let's assume you have a really old computer that's not compatible with Windows 11 and you're running it on unsupported hardware, then removing background processes, unnecessary services, and also uh, you know removing unnecessary bloat like applications can make the system more responsive and it doesn't use as much utilization. It also can increase privacy a little bit by debloating uh, the system. It can disable a lot of telemetry and other data collection features that are built into Windows and give you more control over your personal information than what you give to Microsoft. That being said, it doesn't completely eliminate all privacy concerns because the operating system is a closed OS, which means it's not open source which means you can't see the code. And that means there could be stuff running deeply embedded in the operating system, which we can't gain access to or even turn off. So there is probably some stuff that is still calling home, which I've shown in previous videos, where even after running, say, Chris Titus Text Tool, there is still stuff calling home to Microsoft, but it does reduce it dramatically by turning off a lot of this stuff and removing it from the computer. Now, where you see the most benefit is when you do the more extreme uh, debloating by removing Windows Defender, which is not advisable, or disabling Windows updates and turning off Windows Search and also removing Microsoft Edge and disabling all applications like Copilot and Recall and things like that. If you're turning off all of the key security features like core isolation and these other features that are built into Windows to make Windows more secure, which Windows 11 is the most secure operating system that Microsoft have released to date. And there's versions of Windows that people are using which have had all of the Windows updates completely ripped out, all of the Windows Defender ripped out. And basically, you're leaving yourself really vulnerable and you don't know what's inside these ISO files. So when you install them on your system, you could be literally uh, installing a backdoor right into your computer. So you've got to be super careful when running any sort of script off the internet that you don't know what is doing to your PC and what it's uh, changing on your PC. There's other things as well to watch out for, which is things like Atlas, which is also something that I've looked at in the past. I've tried loads and different types of applications like Talon and other ones like that. And of course, your antivirus will go absolutely crazy. And you'll get some guy in the comments section saying it's completely safe. Just disable your antivirus program and you'll be perfectly fine. And that sends red flags to me. And I do not like to promote stuff that is getting completely flagged and deleted straight away off your system. And that's, I do understand what false positives are and things like that, but you, you're obviously trying to uh, educate people in a safe way to use files safely, like scripts and programs. You have to be mindful that there's a lot of people out there that don't understand the dangers of running these sorts of things on their computer. And this is where the danger is of running scripts and batch files and programs that are going to be making changes to your operating system. And some people don't know what those changes are going to be. So when you push the button to run it, it will suddenly start removing stuff and making changes. And it might be something that you need or want to keep. And unfortunately, it's now gone. And some people end up having to reformat their PC. They haven't had a backup of their data. Maybe their PC starts to have blue screens and crashing. Who knows? There's lots of many different problems out there. I'm not suggesting that some of these programs like, say, oh, no, shut up 10 that's been around for a very long time is one of those programs. It's one of the more trusted ones that you can use and use safely. But there's loads of other ones out there that will do things that you might not expect to do, like completely remove Windows Defender or completely disable 
and remove all of your, say, Windows updates. And this is where you've got to be careful and a bit more mindful about what you're running and what you're downloading onto your system. So what can you expect when you run one of these scripts on your system or run one of these applications on your system or whether it'll be a batch file or do a bunch of tweaks to your PC? What can you expect to happen? To be honest, if you've got a modern day computer, you're not going to see much of a performance boost by running any of these on your PC. You're not going to suddenly start seeing, uh, you know, 300 more FPS or 50 more FPS. It's just not possible by running these scripts on your PC. A lot of sites do promote this quite heavily, uh, but it's all just nonsense. You're not going to see that much of a boost. Now, if you've got an old PC, the reason why you're getting latency and you're getting, you know, spiking and things like that when you're playing games is because your CPU is running at 100% and you've got a modern day GPU in there and it's causing a load of problems. And what they're trying to do is run these on their computer to alleviate a lot of these issues. There's also issues where uh, you've got networking uh, tweaks and you've got other tweaks embedded in some of these scripts which can actually hinder the system and make the system more slower and even break the system so be very very careful in which ones you choose to run on your pc a lot of these scripts are a bit of a placebo where you believe or think that your pc is running faster and it's really not and i've laid the challenge down to a couple of creators that have actually tweaked their systems and I said will you show me the benchmarks before and after and show me where you've gained all of this uh, performance and some of them have been claiming they're now getting 150 to 250 fps boost in some games and I just don't believe it it's all a load of nonsense so who are these scripts really for well I suppose if you value your privacy and you want to reduce the amount of information that is being sent back to Microsoft, then debloating the system or turning a lot of this stuff off can help a little bit. It's not going to stop it completely. And if it makes you feel better by turning a lot of this stuff off, then by all means, go ahead and do so. Do I turn a lot of this stuff off? Yes, I turn off a lot of stuff off that I don't use. I don't use any of these scripts and I don't use any of these methods to debloat my system. I've always used Group Policy Editor, which is built into Windows uh, Pro versions, and I've always used, say, a batch file, which I've created myself, which basically doesn't take long to run. It's actually quicker than some of these scripts. And that way you're reducing the amount of risk and you know exactly what you're turning off on your system. So, the choice is yours at the end of the day. Are you going to see a massive performance boost? Probably not. Are you going to see huge frame rates for when playing games? No, you're not. And are you going to be completely 100% private after running this and stop Microsoft from harvesting data from you? No, you're not. Because, like I said before, it's impossible to completely stop what Microsoft are doing on their own OS. Now, I've seen some crazy comments before where people suggest that Chris Titus Tech's invented all of this and he's the best, just the one to use. And unfortunately, that's just not true. There's been plenty of other people long before him that were creating uh, PowerShell scripts and other scripts before that. What a lot of these applications are based on is each other's code. They use a bit of code here, a bit of code there. And Chris Titus Tech has been nicely managed and put into one bundle and people do use that tool quite a bit and they incorporate that into their own applications and this is where a lot of this uh, script stuff is all coming from so it's all been around for a very long time it's just getting more organized now compared to what it was before now another thing I've seen people say is group policy is too difficult and takes too long to set up but if you put the time and effort in this is all these scripts are doing they're making registry edits and policy changes and things like that once you get all of this set up, you can actually export all of your settings and it will literally take you seconds to drop that onto a fresh install of Windows and get all of your settings back onto the system without running any form of script. So I can do a fresh install of Windows and I can drop, say, these policies in with machine and user policies, drop them into the Windows folder inside Windows 
and basically restart the system and all of those policies will be put in place and all of this stuff will be turned off and I don't have to run any sort of batch file or script or any of that sort of stuff. You can also do registry edits if you want to, if you know what you're doing as well. And again, there is also batch files that you can use for that as well. There's plenty of ways of doing it, which is super simple without having to download anyone else's script. I've got a batch file here. You can run this on the system. You've seen me run these before. It takes a couple of seconds. Just right click, run and say yes. And basically you just put I agree in and away you go. And it will run a bunch of your settings on that system and you'll be up and running in literally seconds. And I know people try to say that it takes longer than that, but honestly, when you run a batch file, it is super quick. It doesn't take long to put those settings onto the system. Once you reboot the PC, you'll get back to the desktop. And depending on what ones you run, I have a standard type one, I have a more advanced one, and I have a more aggressive one, which actually does more advanced stuff. Uh, again, depending on what system I'm setting up. So you can have it where it removes Microsoft Edge and all this sort of stuff as well. There's tons of different ones that you can either create yourself or you can have a look online. There's plenty of tutorials out there that will help you set these up. And that has been my go-to method for many, many years. I'll use Group Policy Editor and I will use my own batch files or my own tweaks. It's that simple. I don't use other people's scripts and I don't use other people's ISOs uh, for debloating a system that I'm going to be using for my own personal use. That way I'm safe and I know what changes are being made on the computer. So I guess we've answered our own question. Should you debloat Windows 11? The answer would be yes and no, depending on who you are and what your needs are and whether you are worried about your privacy to the point of the way people are nowadays. Unfortunately, as soon as you go on the internet, you don't have any privacy. And if you're that concerned about privacy, then why are you using Windows 11 in the first place? Because you'll never ever stop the privacy concerns with Windows because all you're doing is turning off what you see. There's plenty of stuff that you can't see and what you can't turn off because it's embedded in the actual operating system. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, what you use, whether you debloat, whether you don't debloat, or whether you just use a stock Windows and don't worry about it. I'll really be interested to read your comments. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now. <music>